Good day and welcome to the Classroom Connection, the show that takes you inside Marion County Public Schools. I'm Kevin Christian and coming up on today's show, November means Veterans Day and for Marion County this means thousands of students in class and outside. We'll explain why. And big honors for a Marion County Public High School principal and we're talking the national level here. And then our community is a hot spot for fire training. We will explain why in our series on community technical and adult education. Up first though, November marks a brand new era for the Marion County School Board. That's because teacher Kelly King takes her spot on the board representing District 5 and most of the schools on the northern end of our county. She joins us in our studio at this time. So Ms. King, first of all, congratulations. Thank you. I know you're glad the election's over. I am <laughs> ecstatic. <laughs> first question for you, why did you want to be part of the school board? Well, uh, we all know it's not a secret, you know, that I am an educator and I see the importance of uh, the education that our students deserve. And as an educator, I decided, well, I could kind of sit back and take things in or maybe I could try to be a little bit more active for more students in our uh, community. What perspective do you think you can bring as a teacher, a, a third grade teacher? As an element, yeah, right. Uh, I believe my perspective is I understand and I know education. I know our students. I know and understand our community. And so I'm bringing in that perspective. Well, speaking of the community, uh, this next question focuses on that. Where do you stand on the one mill tax referendum that's on this month's ballot? Right. That's a hot topic during the campaign. It still is. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Uh, originally, I was for the uh, referendum tax and as I became a little bit more informed during my campaign I decided to not support the tax and just to, for me personally to wait hold back see if I could maybe uh, look at our budget a little bit more closely before I decide to you know take the stand. Now you know that's the stance that our new superintendent took two years ago and He's now reversed that stance. So if you, if, are you willing, once you get into the budget and maybe you don't see those numbers that you think will be there, are you willing to reverse that? that right. Approach? I would be looking to, uh, to look at it and address it. And um, also, you know, I understand not only is there the referendum tax, but maybe uh, a sales tax. It, when you talk to community members, they seem like they might would support that more than they would, you know, from being taxed. We just have to remember that a sales tax can't be used for salaries. Right, right. All right, uh, as a teacher, what do you think your biggest awakening has been in becoming a member of the school board? Because it's a whole different perspective. It is. Um, my biggest awakening? Mm -hmm. Yeah, biggest surprise or biggest revelation, if you will. <sighs> From education to, you know, I haven't had a lot of experience as a school board member yet. Right now I'm in the transition right. stage. Right. Um, so I can't really say okay. with 100%. We'll, we'll reserve that question for the next time we talk to okay. you, maybe a year from now and get that perspective. Yes, thank you. How much of a difference do you think you can make on the school board? You know, the current makeup as it stands, well, I can't say right now because the election could change things. So right. how much of a difference do you think you can make with that teacher perspective? I feel that I will make a great difference. Um, as I just stated earlier, I understand education, uh, I understand the programs, I understand the commitment uh, that's going on with our teachers and our students, and um, I just feel that when things come across the table, I'll understand and be able to look at it, you know, and um, not be passive. Well, many of the things that will come across your desk as a school board member have multiple audiences attached to them, taxpayers, parents, students, employees, which of those audiences is your most important audience? Uh, my, our students. Glad to hear you say that. Yes. <laughs> Glad to hear you say that. What do you think your first focus area will be as a school board member? Uh, my first focus will be the testing. I feel uh, there is an ex ex extensive, excessive, yeah. excessive amount of testing, and uh, I feel we need to take a close look at that. For those people who are think that Marion County should just stop testing. Tell us a little bit about that. Is that okay. really a position that we need to consider right now? Uh, I don't think we should just completely take testing out of our equation because testing is a tool um, that teachers can look at. But when there is an excessive amount, 
well, then I feel that, you know, it could be abused and we need to focus on teaching our children rather than a test. There's a lot of movement across the state right now by many school districts to not just opt out, but to actually take a, a, a formal stance saying, you know, step back, let's get rid of this testing or suspend it for a year or two and reevaluate everything. Right. As a newcomer to the board, what is your response? Right. I support that. Uh, I think there's a lot of unknowns <laughs> with this you know, test that we don't really know or understand about and it's being field tested in Utah and, you know, so I will take a closer look at that. Lots and to come. Yes. Lots to come. What kind of school board member do you want to be? I would like to be, uh, or not like to be, I will be a school board member that is going to come with a new perspective. I'm going to have a new set of ideas. I'm going to bring energy you know, that is, you know, new. I'm bringing with me my education background. So I understand, you know, what's I'm going on. Mrs. Ely on the board also and comes from a, a strong education background. Do you, do you see your, I don't want to say you guys joining forces because you're already on the same board, but an ally perhaps because of her background or, you know, Mr. James is as well, but the election may change that, so. Right. You think there's a, I don't want to say a partnership, but, but maybe some common ground there? Well, if, naturally, of course, we will have some common ground because uh, she is a former teacher and a principal. So we will understand the education background. You know, I am still teaching until November 14th. So I know what's going on in those classrooms today. Absolutely. What's your, what's your goal as a school board member? Well, maybe your first couple of goals. What do you, what do you want to accomplish there? Maybe right off the bat. Uh, one thing I would like to do is build our bridges with our community members um, and our businesses. And uh, I would also like to uh, help provide our students and our teachers with the opportunity to um, be competitive in our state. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I guess my, my last question here for you is what will you do to help the school board work together with the district instead of being against the district or, or two different planes to help solve some of the issues that we're facing and obviously funding is among those. It is. Okay. Um, well, I'm not here to manage, you know, Mr. Tom and, and stuff. I'm here to work with him and see if we can come together and uh, make wise decisions that is going to affect our students in a positive manner and our educators. Again, congratulations. We're excited to have you on the board. Thank you, Kevin. I know you're excited to be there. I'm Maybe excited. nervous at the same time. Yes. <laughs> you the best of luck, and we'll see you around. Thank you. Well, Westport High School Principal Jane Elsperman is the Florida Principal of the Year right now, but she is also the National Principal of the Year. That's right, the top school principal in the entire country from right here in Marion County. Superintendent George Tommen and his staff, or excuse me, the staff at Westport High School planned a pretty elaborate surprise ceremony for the announcement, and as you're about to see, I think they pulled it off in grand style. After being decoyed to a meeting downtown, Westport High Principal Jane Elsperman returned to campus a little unsure of what was going on. Hi. <laughs> she eventually found Superintendent George Tommen waiting for her outside her office. Where have you been? I've been in Mark Fianella's office. In trouble? That's what I, he, I was waiting for you. From there, she stepped outside. <laughs> where hundreds of students and staff were lined up along her path to the auditorium. All right, here we go. We're gonna, we're gonna walk the gauntlet. <laughs> where she was lovingly greeted by her husband, eventually making it inside where dozens more waited to congratulate her, including several school board members. She even got a phone call from Secretary of Education Arnie Duncan. I am totally and completely overwhelmed. How are you today, sir? Uh, I want to congratulate Jane for just an extraordinary accomplishment. And I would say there, there are no good schools in this country without fantastic principals. And to be principal of the year in a nation of 100,000 schools is just extraordinary. So I just call and say congratulations. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. I appreciate it very much. On behalf of Westport High School and Marion County Public Schools, thank you so much. I have to tell you, I was 
overwhelmed and honored. It truly is an honor to represent 90,000 principals in the United States. It's an honor which took a little bit to grasp. It did. I was just, I was so, I, I, I was really overwhelmed and I think it took me a few minutes to really understand what was going on and they were holding signs and I was trying to read the signs but they were all a blur and it was really nice. A former Marion County principal, State Education Commissioner Pam Stewart has worked closely with Elsperman and can point out what made her stand out from thousands of other principals around the country. What sets Jane apart is that the students here are her heart, she believes in them, and she is constantly looking to be better. Not just Jane Elsperman to be better, but the school can be better and she is going to figure out every which way that the school can be better and that the students can be the best they can be and accomplish whatever they want. This group of students and staff, they are extremely hardworking and they deserve this honor. They deserve, I am, I am only here because of the work that they do. And I think that this says volumes about the outstanding students that we have and the, the fantastic staff. They are, they're enthusiastic they are they are they're bright they are they're totally dedicated to the students and I'm just happy that they get to share this moment with me while we often see principals switch schools every few years or take positions with the district Elsperman has been home for the last decade I love working in a school. I did have the opportunity to work at the at the district level uh, early in my career and I miss the school terribly. I love the energy of the students. I like knowing that I face the future every day. I really, uh, I, it's an honor for me to be able to serve in a school and to work with young people and to see firsthand the potential that we have for the future based on the opportunities that you give students in a school. She also impacts the future by the opportunities she gives administrators working under her. One of the things that for me I notice about Jane is that she can be that principal and relate to students, but she also can train and present to other principals and they all walk away feeling better for having known Jane Elsperman. She definitely feels that that's one of the most important parts of her job is mentoring principals, future principals when they're assistant principals. I enjoyed working for Jane because she gave me the opportunity to show me something, to be a sounding board for me, but then to allow me to do my job. And she was very good at giving me feedback afterwards, but she, you know, trusted me to do what I needed to do to make the school a better place. Ken McAteer is one of three former assistant principals at Westport who now lead their own high school, and they still remember the lessons Elsperman taught them. One of the big things was communication. You, you know, she was always big on making sure that she communicated, that, that uh, people were always in the know of what was going on, that she got out there, she talked to people in the community, she talked to parents, she talked to teachers. You know, she always had a pulse on what was going on, and, and I take that lesson with me and, and try to do the same. I don't know that it's something that she taught me, it's something that she preached, that I preached to my current administrators, and I knew this before going in, but Jane hammers it in all administrators that she trains think things through to impact. That's Jane's mantra. And any decision that you make, anything that you do, sometimes on the, in our job you have to make decisions on the fly, but take that time to think about what your decision, what consequences intended and unintended that decision may have. I probably learned more from them than they learned from me because I th every, every school leader, every person that I've come in contact with has built me to be the leader that I am. And it is, I'm so glad that they've had an opportunity to be able to impact their school community. So I'm very proud of the people that I've worked with that have gone on to become school leaders. It really means a lot to know that they're going to have the, the opportunity to be able to serve their school community and empower leadership as well. In all, 14 of Elsperman's assistant principals have gone on to head up schools of their own. Congratulations. In addition to bragging rights in that big crystal trophy, Principal Jane Elsperman also receives about $4,500 to benefit programs at Westport High School. Again, congratulations to Jane Elsperman, the 2015 National Principal of the Year. We're very proud of her. 
And for years, students in Marion County have attended school on November 11th. That is Veterans Day. It's a practice that's been criticized by the public, but the deciding factor actually came from veterans themselves. Suzanne McGuire is our liaison with the veterans community, and she works with groups like the veterans to involve them in our schools. A lot of interaction with veterans and our students these days. Ms. McGuire, great to see you. Great to see you too. I guess the first question that I'm going to ask you is pretty much the same. We, all, we answer this throughout the year. Why are students in Marion County in class on, Mar on Veterans Day? Well, the Marion County Veterans Council decided that Veterans Day was very important to them and it's very significant and it shouldn't be just another day off where students are going to the mall and you know playing around and not knowing why they're off. So the Veterans Council decided to approach the superintendent and say, we want our students in school. We want them to learn about veterans. We have a beautiful memorial park in, in Marion County, and we'd like the students to participate in a program. And that's kind of when the school system became the lead on setting up the official County Veterans Day program. And that's been eight, nine, ten years ago? I think eight, ago. nine, ten years ago, Something absolutely, like yeah. absolutely. It is a huge event, and, and I know your husband is a military member himself yes. so when you're putting all of this together I know you do that with pride but the day of when it actually is happening and you see that kind of turnout not just from our schools but from the community describe that feeling to us you know I think for a non-traditional military town the pride and the patriotism that is shown is just incredible mm -hmm. having lived in so many communities where we were part of a military base you know, you see that and it's a little more common. And when you know that we've got over 42,000 veterans living in Marion County, and they are all supporting what the school system does with as far as the education of Veterans Day and all the other veterans programs, it's just incredible to stand there and just see everything come together. And we're gonna talk about veterans in the classroom in just a minute, but I wanna first talk about the Veterans Day ceremony itself. Give us an idea of what students are involved in. Well, what the students do, it's actually a student-led uh, program. You know, the politicians are invited. They get to sit and enjoy. They don't get speak. to talk. <laughs> no, they don't get to talk. And it's really just to show that the students are learning about patriotism and about what the sacrifices of the veterans, you know, have gone through to give them the rights just to be in school and to express their views. So the students will have poems that they've written. They'll sing very traditional patriotic songs. Um, we have students leading the pledge and you know of course traditionally there's a flyover mm -hmm. and the Marine Corps will you know escort families and place the memorial wreath and it's just a wonderful program all the music is usually high school band members who participate so it's really a great opportunity for students to see the park to participate in the program and for the community to see how much they're really learning about history and civics and all that kind of stuff so patriotism is alive and well. Absolutely. Absolutely. How do you get all those kids there and back? I know there's probably around 1,500, maybe 2,000 students in the park at the time. Yes, the buses, uh, the people who organize those buses, it's wonderful. <laughs> I mean, it's just like a little symphony of, of buses that float in and out. And of course, the, you know, my motorcycle veterans groups mm -hmm. and some of my other veterans are all volunteers who help escort the students to where they need to be and they can tour the park. There's all kinds of monuments. There's going to be the replica of the Nautilus sub. Um, some you know military vehicles so there's a lot for them to see and learn while they're here so we've talked about kids coming to the veterans let's talk about veterans coming to the kids veterans in the classroom tell us about that well Marion County when I became the liaison with the veterans community we were actually the first school system in the state to formalize an agreement with the Veterans Council and create the veterans in the classroom program and it's something where you know kids can read things in a book but when you have living history standing in front mm -hmm. of you, it's completely different. And the veterans ask, you know, answer all the questions about their service, what they did in the private sector after they got out of the military service. And also we have developed a flag folding ceremony, which is very special, written by two of our local veterans that actually takes each fold of the flag and takes us from prior, you know, beginning of the war, Revolutionary War, all the way up through Iraq mm -hmm. and Afghanistan. So it's a history lesson that the students get while the veterans are standing there. Who do you think gets more out of that program, the veterans or the students? I think the veterans really enjoy yeah. it. I think they do. I think they like all the questions and they like visiting with the students and seeing that they're really interested in what's going on. How do we get more veterans to be part of this? Well, uh, we have on the website, the Marion County School System website, mm -hmm. we have the veterans in the classroom brochure. We have all the volunteer opportunities listed there. They can complete a volunteer form. 
They can contact the Marion County Veterans Council or come to a meeting, which is the third Thursday of every month at, at the library. Mm -hmm. And we talk about the different activities in the school system and with the veterans and kind of, I kind of tell them what we need them to do and where we and want them it. to be. <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> you kind of twist their arm a little bit. You know, I, I think being, you know, understanding the military culture sure. is, is helpful. Well, Absolutely. I know you work hard. My last question for you is how do you measure the success of those veterans when they come into the classroom? How do you really know they've they've really succeeded in what they're Well, is. you know, we also at the Veterans Council started a Flag Day essay program with our elementary students. So the veterans go in, talk about Flag Day, do the flag folding demonstration, mm -hmm. and then we get to read the essays. And the veterans judge the essays. And they can tell the difference where if they heard their presentation and know what the blue really stands for, the red really stands for, versus, you know, strawberry in a donut. <laughs> Big difference. And we had that one of the first years or two. So they really have seen the growth in our students. And when they hear the essays, they know that they've made a difference. Well, Congratulations on a great program. Thank and, you. And good luck on, on the Veterans Day ceremony this year. You do a great job, and I'm thank honored you. to be part of it as and well. And thank you for so. your help in, in making us run smoothly while we're there. It's a great opportunity, and I love it. I thank really you. Do. And thanks for joining us. Today. Oh, absolutely. Thank you. Well, in this month's Student Spotlight, we want you to meet Brandon Williams, a senior at Bellevue High School. His research could impact female athletes from around the world. I enjoy the world statistics because it's a way to tell stories by the numbers because no numbers don't lie, but people do. Bellevue High's Brandon Williams was talking with his mother about her old home ec class when he got an idea. We were talking about gender equality and I was like, wait, what can I do with this? This is a global issue, gender equality. So what I did was I applied it to the Olympic Games using it as a template to show the increase in gender equality in the Olympic Games. In 2012 was the first time women have ever competed in the Olympic Games for every single country participating and through my research I showed that women actually win more medals than their male counterparts percentage-wise so you're more successful in order to send a woman to the Games than a man. While his project was racking up awards at science fairs it also caught the attention of Anita de France, a member of the International Olympic Committee. For many years she's been telling people that women have a higher percentage of chance of winning a medal than the men are because there's less women competing in the games and that she wanted to prove that point and she wanted to prove it at the next International Olympic Committee where all the countries in the that participate in the Olympic Games will actually be witness to the study. It took a little bit before what she was asking really sunk in. I honestly couldn't believe the fact I thought that they wouldn't have accepted it. I didn't think that they were going to do anything with it and when I saw that email it just kind of took me five minutes and then I was like realized wait I'm I did it they liked my research and nobody's ever taken this aspect of research before so for my research to be the pioneer in this field of finding gender equality in New Olympic Games I just feel great and I just can't help but smile Williams' research has led him to a formula to project the success a host nation will have based on its previous Olympic medal haul. Based on that, he projects the next host nation, Brazil, will win between 21 and 50 medals with a specific target number of 36. Now we'll have to wait and see if Brandon's predictions ring true for the 2016 Olympic Games in where? Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, exactly. Well, closer to home, there's a highly respected college right in our own backyard when it comes to firefighting. In part three of our special series on CTAE, Chadwick Pierce explains why those entering the profession do not have to travel too far to learn their craft. Fire is the rapid oxidation of a material in the exothermic chemical process of combustion, releasing heat, light, smoke, and flame. And the heroic men and women who suit up to battle it are trained right here in Ocala at the fire college through CTAE. But the college has not always been based here locally. The fire college originally was a traveling college that was hosted in different places in, in the state of Florida. Approximately 1972, it landed in Ocala where they had property at uh, MLK and State Road 40 right in the middle of town. 
It existed from approximately 1972 to 1989, where it was then relocated up here to other state property, so that when we were doing burns, hazard materials, those things, we were further away from residents. Having the college base locally has allowed partnerships to develop within the community. What we have here is a co-op between two public agencies. So this is a public-public partnership that has existed since 1972. Um, rather than the school board having their own facility and the state having their own facility, this is an outstanding use of taxpayer dollars. It allows us to marry together state resources and funding along with local resources and funding to best serve the students, which are the priority why we're here, and then also the community, the state, and even the nation at times. CTAE has played a tremendous role in that partnership with their unique contribution. One reason why the Marion County School Board had Adult Ed is involved and it's CTE's formula for success, a part of it, are all the instructors are part-time adjunct instructors, so they are all active in the fire service. So every day they are working structure fires, emergency medical calls, extrications on a 24-hour shift, and then they come here on their days in between to teach these students how to do the same thing. These instructors also know how the college is perceived elsewhere in the state. One of the things that uh, we have built upon is our reputation. Um, I have talked with other um, fire departments, chiefs, training directors um, from around the, the state of Florida, and a lot of them have sat there and said, we know what you do as far as training your people. We know that when they come in here, they start the first day getting into that regiment of what they would do going to a station, that they're clean shaven, that their the uniform is, is uh, proper, it's not looking like they've been sleeping in it for three weeks, that uh, this is the employee that these departments want. So that gets out, gets around, and people say, listen, I know if I go up to Ocala and take it through CTAE that I'm going to get probably the best, and I'm, I'm a little biased that I work here, but the best education as far as a firefighter in the state of Florida. That promise of higher education and top-notch training is what brings the students to this college. Early on, we were in the classroom a lot, basically five days a week, taking an exam every couple of days. Um, now we're into the more practical exams, which is our hands-on training, uh, which is, is like I talked about earlier, tying tools, and then we also pull ho advancing hose line, um, you know, up, up and down stairs, out of buildings, in buildings, doing some forcible entry. So it's, it's uh, stressful at times as well, but I feel that the training that we've been given here, uh, that we do just about daily, I mean, we train even in our downtime uh, to work on some of the skills that we're going to be tested on. Uh, that has helped immensely. Fire College graduates earn pro board accreditation, which means they can go anywhere in the world and become a paid firefighter. Well, he often puts out fires of a different kind. Of course, I'm talking about our superintendent, Mr. George Tommen, and he is here now to share his thoughts in this month's superintendent spotlight. During the month of November, our country and our community celebrate the holiday we call Thanksgiving. So we tend to think of Thanksgiving and giving thanks during the entire month of November. But you know, we should give thanks all year long. I'm going to get in trouble here because I'm going to forget some things, but I want to tell you what I am thankful for 12 months a year. I'm thankful to be a part of a great Marion County public school system where over 5,000 employees serve the needs of our children. I'm thankful for those 42,000 students who come to school. And you know what? 98% of those 42,000 students do exactly what they're supposed to do each and every day. And I'm grateful and thankful for that. I'm thankful for our employees. I'm thankful for our wonderful teachers. I'm thankful for our transportation workers who bring our students to school. I'm thankful for our cafeteria workers who feed our children every day. Again, I'm thankful for our teachers who teach our children vital skills each and every day. I'm thankful for our health clinic assistants who take care of our students' medical needs each and every day. I'm thankful for our parents who support their children and support our schools. I'm thankful for the 
the thousands and thousands of volunteers that come to our schools each and every day reading to children, mentoring children. I'm thankful for our Public Education Foundation, which supports all facets of our community. I'm thankful for our local government entities who continue to support us, especially our law enforcement agencies that help us each and every day when we are in need. So you see, there's a lot to be thankful for right here in Marion County. I'm glad to be a part of the Marion County Public School Systems. I'm going to say thank you each and every day, not just the month of November. Thanks, Mr. Tommen, and thank you for joining us today. Parents, remember to be there for your child every day. We'll see you again here next month.